मैं उस मोमेंट के बारे में बात करूंगा जहां राष्ट्रवाद फैशिज्म में ट्रांसफॉर्म होता है इनफैक्ट द वर्स्ट फियर्स अबाउट द एग्रेसिव मेजोरिटेरियन नेशनलिज्म विच हैड बीन एक्सप्रेस बाय महात्मा गांधी एंड बाय रविंद्रनाथ टैगोर are coming true in front of our eyes well gandhi was perhaps one of the first to warn about the dangers of a hindu or the majoritarian nationalism of course he had arguments with tagore on certain issues of nation i am not going into that i have a whole long essay on that the pathography of nationalism uh, but tagore and gandhi were both agreed on the possible perils on the possible dangers of the development of a majoritarian nationalism an aggressive rapacious uh, greedy chauvinistic uh, nationalism based on hatred in india which will be which will uh, lead to what aburwan has just spoken about the, the the culture of violence the suppression of the freedom and of the civil rights and the othering of minorities and the ultimate murder of the very idea of india as a sovereign secular socialist democratic republic uh, the way in which our constitution has defined it uh, and, and to put that india under under challenge because all the four states of democracy as we as we know are under siege and about the fourth state i need not say what well, uh, speak about the revelations which just uh, just come out uh, um, in in the last two days so when he said that nationalism gets transformed or rather slips into the nazi model of fascism there have been several definitions of fascism i'm not i'm not quoting anyone but you know that um, right from umberto eco to Her hanna arend and um, talcott parsons a lot of uh, intellectuals uh, right from william ree perhaps have tried to define what fascism is i'll i'll just mention some of the basic characteristics of fascism and you can just connect it with what is happening around us today one is the uncritical worship of a a past but a manufactured golden past because the hindutvavadis keep saying that we had a great golden past when we were not divided we were all together we were all hindus but we know that it is a myth we know that we had the caste system we had divisions there was no unified hinduism there were so many cults uh, which uh, kept dividing india and there was a lot of violence also where we you know shaivites would uh, attack the vaishnavites and the vaishnavites would attack attack the shaivites i am not saying that we did not have anything positive in our tradition we did have and we need to uphold whatever was positive in our tradition but we we had divisions we had uh, we had violence uh, in that past and we never had because that is that is the way in which history is being reconceived today there was a golden past when everything was fine and then came a, a medieval time when the muslims came and destroyed the uh, the fabric of the nation and then the british came there was a period of colonialism and now we want to retrieve that lost golden past that is the way in which history national history is being presented today so as a result of this there is also a natural distortion of history objective history is being sidelined and a new history is being created which has been called the uh, uh, hindu hindu history that is what the vishwa hindu parishad says we should have a, a, a hindu uh, history and that also is related to what can be called what tagore also uh, had called racial egoism now there's a lot of talk about uh, aryans i come from kerala so i should be david by that uh, davidian by that definition 
even though uh, anyone who has studied anthropology or studied history knows that we are all actually a mixed people we are a mixed people uh, are, and it is it is not possible for anybody in india today to claim that uh, he or she is aryan or dravidian or belongs to any particular race but now there is a revival of the uh, the pride in the aryan blood which was also the basis as you very well know of hitler's uh, nazism in in germany and 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 then there is looking at the people as a monolith which again is a symptom of fascism i mean I, I already in the last session there was a lot of uh, 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 talk about uh, the suppression of diversity the mother of the plurality of india which again is characteristic of uh, all kinds of uh, fascism of which uh, eco calls it uh, ur fascism a kind of universal fascism and then the, uh, so there is a denial of diversity and as a consequence there is a denial of agency uh, to the people there is a rejection of rational thinking i need not give you examples you know right from uh, the prime minister uh, to the leaders uh, of the various uh, divisions of the hindutva brigade everybody is confusing uh, myth and legend for science uh, you know wendy doniger has just come out with a book called beyond the dharma which some of you must have read where she uses the word mytho science for this new kind of science which is a mixture of mythology and science which or when mythology is conceived as science and 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 uh, you know uh, presented as 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 science and seeing the opposition as the enemy seeing dissent as conspiracy valorizing death and a kind of uh, uh, and a kind of macho nationalism which is extremely uh, patriarchal you know uh, you have heard of hitler's uh, notorious uh, def uh, definition that a country uh, that the people are like women and they will easily submit to a strong man which shows both the contempt for the nation and the contempt for the people and certainly contempt for women so this patriarchy this kind of show of the muscle and and all the talk about uh, the chest of a particular leader well uh, this comes exactly from this macho idea a patriarchal idea of uh, of of the nation and the contempt for the weaker sections a suspicion of artists of uh, in, uh, of uh, intellectuals uh, which we have seen it is not only suspicion it has led to the murder as we very well know of journalists and thinkers including spiritual thinkers and and gandhians right like i i need not name them pansare and thabolkar and uh, gauri lankesh and mm kalburgi uh none of whom was in fact against uh, uh, against the tradition of the uh, the positive traditions of the nation uh, but who always upheld the best in the tradition and uh, one of them was a gandhian one of them uh, was a follower of basava who was a great social reform a spiritual reformer and so these are the people they chose to kill other than of course uh, 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 muslims in the uh, i mean whether, whether it is uh, junaid or uh, Uh, najib who has disappeared or oh, about whom we know very little uh, and and of course right from pahlu khan and akla khan so in the name of food so we have seen people being killed in the name of food in the name of thought in the name of uh, various kinds of uh, philosophical attitudes and of uh, and of dissent uh, and of dissent and so there is a contempt for the weaker sections and and faulting democracy as a kind of in inconvenience that is typical of uh, of fascism democracy is a kind of inconvenience in the path of the so called development and who does this development benefit does it benefit the ordinary man it was gandhi who said we should look at everything from the point of view of the the commonest man and and this development as we very well know has benefited only a few corporates a few families and and for this development they think democracy kind of uh, a kind of inconvenience because it gives freedom to people it uh, it, it uh, gives freedom to workers to strike work or people to uh, uh, raise issues of environment all these they think are a kind of hindrance to development so ultimately freedom itself democratic freedom basic rights they become hindrances to development and and there is also uh, as a part of it an anti labor anti environment stance 
and a reduction of the privileges of the of the working people and equating peace with surrender a fear of difference and diversity and a contempt for any kind of subtle and nuanced thinking and a colonization of the state and a, and a combination, a strange combination, paradoxical combination of the populist rhetoric with a pro-upper class policy. The rhetoric is populist. It speaks always about the, about the people. And our PM also thinks he represents the people. Uh, but uh, at the same time, the po if you look at the policy, it is completely for the upper caste and the upper class. So these, are, uh, these have been always looked upon as the symptoms of authoritarian populism and as uh, symptoms of uh, fascism of, uh, uh, of various kinds. I, I will not go into the whole discussion of the, defini the various definitions of nationalism. Um, I mean, in fact, the discussion in modern days starts from uh, Benedict Anderson's idea of the, of the nation. And it was another thinker who said, uh, Ernest Gellner, it invents nations where do, they do not exist. Nationalism invents nations where actually they do not exist. So it is cre created. Nation is a kind of dynastic, uh, is closer to religion and kinship. It's a kind of dynastic realm. Uh, and it is created through national epics, national anthems, national flags, national armies, national museums, archives, national even national birds and national animals. And finally, a sedition law that will, uh, that uh, through using which you can suppress or murder anyone calling him or her a, a traitor, as it happened to many writers, even those who were uh, fighting uh, the, 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 the nuclear pl uh, plant in Tamil Nadu. Uh, so uh, right from Arundhati Roy uh, to the, uh, the leaders of environmental movements, you find all of them have been charged with, uh, with sedition, which originally, remember, was a colonial law, which we should have removed as soon as we got independence. But it is still being uh, abused uh, to, to attack people who really love the nation and who, who try to do something for the people. So, it, so, uh, so, uh, uh, and, and, and one part of uh, this kind of nationalism is also uh, uh, surveillance. Um, that is, in fact, today with the new technologies, there is no need of, uh, uh, there is no need of appointing uh, prisoners, appointing people uh, to, to watch you. But if you can turn the whole country into a jail, and if the ministry and all the bureaucrats are jailers, there is no need for separate jails. It is easier today to turn the whole country into a jail, into a prison, uh, because you are being watched. Everything that you do, every message that you send on your uh, on your on your smartphone, every every uh, message that you convey on your WhatsApp, everything that every email that you send, so you are under constant wa under constant watch, constant surveillance. As a result, you uh, every every per every person becomes. Uh, in some sense, a kind of uh, what is what is called a panopticon. So yeah, so there is a uh, there is a kind of uh, um, a, a psycho politics at work where every individual, uh, every every subject, every uh, subject of the uh, nation becomes a digitalized and networked subject, which becomes uh, something like a panopticon, which is you know that. Or, Foucault uses that as a structure of the prison, where you have uh, you have a uh, you have a square at the center, where there is a tower from where somebody is always watching you. So even if there is nobody there, the prisoners feel that they are being watched. That is the central idea of the of the panopticon, and so it also generates a consent. Uh, a word that Gramsci uses that is uh, it creates uh, uh, even though the uh, uh, the government uh, has its own plans you feel that you are a part of it you feel that you have agreed you have agreed to uh, you, you found people queuing up uh, after demonetization we find people queuing up to make their other cards and and uh, and silently uh, supporting the murder of opponents or uh, uh, silently watching the takeover of every uh, liberal institution manipulation of education and and all the anti uh, anti um, uh, immigrant and anti anti labor laws and so there is a kind of constant shaping of a uh, so called common sense uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, the, which will only support the hegemonic uh, classes. I mean the ruling classes, uh, the ruling castes, uh, and the ruling uh, gender. 
Uh, I, so I have been asked to close. I will just close saying, so, so what do we need to do? We need to perhaps develop another idea of nationalism, uh, uh, what can be called a democratic, uh, uh, to, uh, I mean, in content, the subaltern uh, counter-nationalism, which is based on justice, on freedom, and on equality. By counter-nationalism, I don't mean anti-nationalism, but a nationalism of a different kind, where the where the people are supreme, and where the and by the people I mean definitely I mean the suppressed, the othered, the, the the minorities, the people from the northeast, the tribals, the Dalits, all those people should become uh, the decisive authority. Secondly, uh, uh, st uh, study history objectively, have genuine faith in people's power, have uh, uh, de uh, defend in independent public institutions and secular spaces, maintain professional ethics, develop a democratic critique of the media, caution against uh, the paramilitary organizations, which are the uh, breeding grounds of violence, emphasize facts against rhetoric, get out of one's own comfort zones and address the unfamiliar, uphold religious amity, or what uh, Gandhi called the uh, Sarva Dharma Samabhavana, support genuine civil society organs and human rights organizations, defend democratic rights from le from and, and legal rights, resist the misuse of constitution uh, 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 and, and the denigration of uh, uh, provisions for human rights, defend uh, federalism against over-centralization and pluralism against the monolithic idea of the nation, and uh, defend the positive aspects of tradition, at the same time criticize all its negative aspects. Be patriotic by, by working for the underprivileged without promoting exclu exclusivist and insular idea of a nation, which is uh, the kind of nationalist ideology that Gandhi and Tagore had been profoundly critical of. Thank you, sir.